I love her dearly. By the way, Steve, when I came to your addiction free pain management training, we did this exercise in training, all of us, and it works for all types of self defeating behavior. It doesn't have to be addiction. If you have a temper problem or whatever your issue that sort of gets in your way, this mapping works great. It was very eye opening. Yeah, I've used it with, when I do marriage and family therapy, couples therapy. We'll have them map out their arguments. I've mapped out some of Ellen and I's arguments. <laughs> <laughs> Name the game, right? Walk them through. So now right here, there's a place between, between here and here that I call the decision point. Right here. This is the point of no return. Because the next step is the action. And here's where I want to remind people that you're not a victim, you're a volunteer. You made a choice. But unfortunately, some people are moving so fast, it's automatic. It's what I always do in that situation. And that leads to the social reaction. So for every action, there's a reaction. And this is based on a pyramid of people's perceptions and beliefs. And usually, they're mistaken beliefs and skewed perceptions. Perceptions, how I see myself, others in the world. And the belief system we develop has a lot of uh, not so true things. Just because I believe it doesn't mean it's true. And want to help people see that. So that is a very powerful tool to work with people on, along with doing the situation map. Then some people, you know, I want to go a little bit further with them. So this is a little worksheet I developed when I was doing domestic <coughs> violence treatment. Uh, we want people to start with defining the action that got them their painful reality. Then, what was your intention? Some people get in bad situations for good reasons. And what do they say about intentions? The road to hell is paved with them, right? And the other saying I really like is, we judge ourselves by our intentions. The world judges us by our behavior. So once we have the actions and the intentions, then we hone in. This is where I do beliefs. I want to, what must you believe about yourself, others, and the world in order to do what you did to get you here? What must you believe? Then the last step are the consequences. And those are twofold, self and others. And this is a very powerful tool for a lot of people because it breaks it down real simple. And some of the people I work with, you know, they don't have real high levels of cognition or reading and writing skills. Something like this is just so simple for them, they really can get. And even sophisticated people can get. And then there's the flow chart. You hit a denial trigger. And what's a denial trigger? Anybody got a guess? What's a denial trigger? What might that look like? Think about a painful reality where you were in denial until you weren't. Getting fired? Getting fired could be a denial trigger. Getting in an argument with a significant other could be a denial trigger. Being told by your doctor he's not going to prescribe for you anymore could be a denial trigger. I mean, there's a lot of things that trigger denial, right? Now, when the trigger gets hit, the next thing that happens is the brain processes that. And if the brain is in the monkey land, it's going to process it differently than if it's in a calm, peace-centered place, right? So if people stress levels, on the other part that Joe really liked about the training was the stress thermometer. So when, on a 1 to 10 stress scale, when people get above a uh, 6, 7, and above, uh, they're not in their right mind, literally. And that's where the brain processes things really differently. That leads to very uncomfortable emotional responses which leads to those urges and impulses, the person acts on those and wonder, why is everybody mad at me? Anybody been there? <laughs> and there's the decision point, the point of no return. So at the point of no return, what I want to teach people is one of the first interventions is to change your thinking. The use of positive self-talk to avoid painful reality. So looking at this diagram, where is the very last place you can plug in positive self-talk in order to avoid a negative consequence? What do you think? Last place, the very last place you can do it in order to avoid this. No, urges, impulses? The decision point. 
the decision point. Where's the best place, though? Brain. Okay, and that's a common mistake of belief. And that's why we do denial management work, is because this is what relapse prevention is all about. And relapse prevention has to start with denial management. We have to give people tools to have before they hit the trigger. And we have to have them program those skills in before they hit the trigger. Psychodrama is a powerful tool. We need to get them to practice and rehearse so that when they hit these triggers, they have a fighting chance. And they have a plan. Because those who fail to plan, plan to fail. So denial pattern management, again, at the cognitive or thinking level, at the affective level, behavioral level, and societal level. So we need to hit all those levels. So one of the things I'll ask people, when you're, when you're in this situation and having those painful realities and one of these monkeys pop up, what was your thinking? What were you saying? And some of them try to answer with loquacious, long sentences. They said, no. When you're in the monkey, the monkey talks in sound bites, <laughs> phrases, bullets. This sucks. This isn't fair. I don't like this. That's the monkey, right? And what's another way of challenging that monkey with some positive, powerful intervention? Stop. I need to listen. Stop. I'm in recovery. Stop. Recovery first. Those are just some, first, some little things that pop into my head because a lot of my patients, those are some of the interventions that come up with. So it depends on the situation what the, the thinking challenges are. And we don't have time to really go into that. I wish we did. I could spend and do often three days training people in denial management. So affectively, we want to get into emotions. Now, uh, I'm sure you guys know that most people who get in, into treatment usually don't have very much ability to identify how they're feeling and articulate their emotional state, right? So sometimes we have to give them some feeling checklists and tools like that. And then we want, once they can identify a feeling, a lot of people have a mistaken belief that's on or off. No, there's ranges, like with anger. Mild irritation to blind rage and all the steps in between. So how strong is this feeling? Now, what's a way of managing your feelings that's gonna help you so you don't end up having that painful reality? So that you stop listening to the monkey. I tell people, you've gotta stop feeding the monkey bananas. <laughs> and the bananas are the negative self-defeating thoughts. So stop feeding the monkey bananas. Go to health food. Go to health food. Behaviorally, what do you have an urge to do and what do you usually do? And what's another way of managing these urges? I take people through a simple five-step process and it's very simple. And if some of you don't have anything to write with, you can come over to the booth and ask me later. But the first step is pause, put yourself in time out. That's what I need to do when I hit those triggers. I've gotten really good at it. And when I work with couples, I teach them this. This is how to help couples have better relationships, right? So as soon as you're in the middle of an argument, whoa, I need a timeout. I need to put myself in timeout. Now, what a lot of people do, though, in that timeout, they try to go find all the evidence to support why they're right in the argument. <laughs> no, not what this is about. So the first step is pause. The next step then has to be, let's get the stress levels down. The next step is relax. So pause, relax. And you don't do anything else except some people, it might be go for a walk, go for a run, go for a swim, uh, do some journaling, do some meditating. Do something that brings your stress levels back down. So stress management is a big core component of our program, which we go over continuously, several times a week actually, in our six week program. Because it is so important to keep those stress levels down. So once you get relaxed, the next step is to now you reflect. How did I get myself here? We don't look at the other person. What did I do that got me here? That sound familiar to anybody, owning our part of it? 
So we look at our part. What, what, how did I get here is phase one of the reflect. Phase two of the reflect is what are some healthy ways to move beyond this? So that's what reflection is. How did I get here and how do I get out? Then the next step, the fourth step, is decide. This is where I pick one of those options. I make a decision. And a lot of people can get to this part really well, but then they procrastinate. So there has to be a fifth step. The fifth step is do it. Easy does it, but do it. So pause, relax, reflect, decide, and do. And that is really crucial for denial management, but it's also crucial for a lot of different areas. 